Hi everyone, today we have a new video review and as you can see this time we are going to talk about fresh release from Miniard. It comes in a 135 scale and here we have a Stuck 3, so it's ALF G version from 1945 and as you can see here we have Alget production vehicle and of course in 135 scale it might be an interesting build for all modellers who would like to have this vehicle in their collection and of course we have a commercial sample here so this kit number 35388 as it's written here it's a final shape of this kit so you will get exactly the same stuff as what you'll see in this video review and first thing I would like to note here is that the box is surprisingly large even though this is not an interior kit as far as you can see and here you can check the comparison with my hand so we have nice box art here also we have a short list of the features but we will talk about them further in the video review and then here on the side you will find some safety information also address of the manufacturer while on the opposite side you can see the let's say decals map and the mention that it was printed in cartograph and here we have six marking options as a profiles so that you can understand what you will be getting as an options in this kit so now let's open this box it's a top opening box and here is what we have inside as you can see we have all parts packed into one plastic bag so now we just need to cut through it and start checking everything one by one. In the meantime, I can remind you that this is a completely new tooled release. So this plastic is not reused from some other brand. It's a, a mini art, let's say, plastic which was developed by them. And that's why it uses some of the modern technologies, some of the modern design tech. And obviously it's superior to what we have um, on the market prior to this release but you will see it in a few seconds once I remove all of the spruce so just give me a moment okay even though this is not an interior kit still we get a lot of plastic spruce here so be ready for a quite a long review for example we have this large envelope with mini art logo so here we should have the P fret actually PE frets because there are several of them surprisingly so just give me a second one comes with all of the external parts for this vehicle so I guess here I will have to zoom in even further so that you can see all these parts in a bit more detailed way so as you can see they look quite nice and I don't think you will have any issues here the only thing is that for some parts you need to have the tweezers because otherwise it will be nearly impossible to get them into the right spot but the second PE fret is a bit more tricky and it might look simple at the first side because here we have the so-called Schurzen so this is external armor as you can guess and as you can see we have large armor panels but these armor panels should be affixed onto the metal uh, or PE attachments these are quite small here you can see in comparison with my fingertip so this is something what will require some time and dedication from you and definitely not something what can be done in few minutes and next we also have decals as you remember they come in from cartograph so that's why you don't have to worry about any printing quality issues and as you can see we have all necessary symbols for uh, several marking options which we saw on the side of the box we will talk further about these options when we will be checking the assembly manual so it's something to discuss a bit later now i am opening another plastic bag which is carrying the clear sprue so just give me a bit of time okay so here traditionally for mini art we get the clear parts for the periscopes headlamps and other stuff so uh, it's really good but we do not have any masks or masking templates so in case you would like to cover these parts properly you will have to find some aftermarket or maybe cut your own masks or create your own templates now we can start with a gray plastic spruce first one is dedicated to pioneer tools and here I will have to zoom out a bit so that you can see the full sprue and as you can see molding quality looks rather nice I think it's just a matter of separating all of these parts and installing them onto the vehicle which is quite interesting is that I do not see any 
clamps on the tools. So I guess those will be replicated with help of P parts and this is something to be ready for because it is definitely a bit more tricky, especially if you don't have experience with such stuff. So um, I think this is not something I would recommend to beginner. Next we continue with the sprue B. So this one is noticeably bigger. And here you can see that we have the four panel and side panels for the lower house section. We have also the rear armor wall. Here we have various separate hatches. And also I can see the periscopes, the turret parts. So everything looks quite nice. Again, small reminder that we do not get interior here. So if I flip it over, we get some interior features here, but this will be just closed inside. It will not be used in the vehicle. So it's something to keep in mind. And I know that some Madeira is actually happy to know that there is no interior because they are more focused on the external uh, features. Maybe that's why Miniart actually produces several versions of this vehicle and you get the choice between interior or interior less version. Okay, here we continue with another plastic sprue. So this one is dedicated to the drivetrain as far as you can see. We also have this uh, torsion bars and some of the suspension parts and also some of the engine cooling fans. But again, engine is not included here. So it's just something what will be visible through the engine bay cover. So I guess that's why they are included. Next, another narrow plastic sprue. So this is something what Miniart likes, to be honest. So as you can see, it's quite narrow, even though it could be a slightly different shape. But here we get a lot of external panels. I can see some exhaust covers. I also can see here some of the panels for the uh, hull sections or hull panels. And from the opposite side, we have guiding pins on all necessary spots. So again, it's not just a plain part. It has some guidance system, which will help you with overall alignment. And now I need a bit of time because here we come to the spruce with road wheels. And I'm not sure how many of those we have here. So as far as I can see, there are four of them. And this is a small sprue, so that's why we will check it like that. We won't be checking the same stuff again and again. So here you can see the road wheels. Obviously the masking template is not included here, so if you would like to get the perfect finish on these rubber sections, you will have to do it with the sharp brush or maybe cut out the circular masks. But overall, I like details we get on these parts. As you can see, there is some pre-molded uh, features on the rubber sections. And again, the attachment points should be easy to separate. And here we have attachment elements which will help you with overall alignment. So it's not a difficult task to join them together. Next, we continue with the sprue AK. So here we get the idlers. And as you can see, they are also assembled um, out of two parts each. Again, we have some guiding elements here. And again, molding quality seems to be fine. Each part is affixed on three attachment points. So it's a simple task to separate them and get them onto your vehicle. Next, we continue with the drive sprocket. So each of them is coming on the separate plastic sprue. I will bring one closer so that you can see the external features because we have nice casting marks here. We also have attachment points placed on the teeth. So be careful while working with such stuff. And here on the opposite side, you can see that again, we have guiding elements. Of course, you will have to delete this molding pin, but that's not a difficult task. And this is something uh, surprising that we see quite often in recent mini art releases. I guess maybe the molding technologies do not allow to change it, to avoid it. Who knows? If you have some different, let's say, information, feel free to write in the comments. Here we continue with another road wheels. So again, quite nice features on the tires. As you can see, we have pre-molded details and writings. And here you can see the parts from the opposite side. Okay, so let's move the sprue to the side. Next, we continue with the sprue, which is dedicated to track links and actually we have a lot of track links so I just need a bit of time to collect all of the sprues as far as you can see they are absolutely identical 
and they actually make up the biggest portion of the spruce so here you can see them all and let me count them so one two three four five six seven so ten of them for the tracks only and now i leave only one on the table so that you can check what we actually get here so these are separate track links which are more than welcome in 135 scale armor kit and of course we do not have the assembly jig here so you have to be careful while joining all of this stuff together maybe it's a good idea also to follow the assembly manual instructions because there will be written the exact amount of the track links which will be needed to assemble from each side and of course such parts are easier to paint and weather they look more realistic, so that's why I'm always happy when I see such bonus included into the plastic kit, especially in 135 scale. Next, we continue with the side skirts. So here you can see that these parts are coming as a single piece parts. We also have quite nice pre-molded features and they will definitely benefit from some washings and maybe also oils. And here you can check them from the inner side. So Miniar did not skip here as well. So it's not a plain part. It's actually featuring some of the details and if I try to focus the camera closer you can see what I'm talking about okay next we have two identical plastic spruce with some thin parts I'm not sure where they will be used so we will have to check the assembly manual next we continue with the sprue HA so here we have another portion of the pioneer tools nothing special I mean it's a good quality and of course you don't have to use all of them I know some modellers uh, think and maybe it's a right approach that some of the tools who have the side actually create slightly different vehicle because not all vehicles were completely perfect so here we continue with the parts for the main gun as far as you can see and frankly speaking I'm not sure if it will be fully replicated here but at least I can see some parts for the muzzle brake on this main gun. As you can see, each muzzle brake should be assembled out of several parts. But here we have quite a smart parts design. So we do not have the muzzle brake, which is assembled out of two halves. Just like in some Tamiya kits, for example, we get it uh, to be assembled out of three parts. But we get the separate frontal section. So this main cone let's say as you can see here it is molded as a single piece part and you don't have any unnecessary gaps or other problems in this visible area which is really nice because it will benefit the overall detailing of your vehicle next we continue with another hull panel so here you can notice that we have separate panels i mean hatches you can open them but the question is what you will be exposing because again i remind you that here we deal with you know the version without interior so if you would like to show something inside well good luck with that because it's not included into the package next we continue with another plastic sprue again some armor panels again the same design that we have separate hatches that's what is actually good in mini art kits that all the hatches which should be separate they are separate in the kit and this is still handy even in the version without interior because you can use it for some diorama ideas so definitely a good thing to have out of the box next we continue with the main gun so here we have the um, this let's say main gun mask and also the main gun barrel and as you remember the muzzle brake was molded separately so there is nothing to worry about but that's really cool that these parts are coming as a single piece element so you don't have to deal with uh, all of these gaps and other problems next another portion of panels these ones will be used for the superstructure as far as I understand. So the overall idea or approach to the design is pretty much the same as what we saw on the main hull. It's just a matter of combining all of these panels together. We have quite smart guiding system here and there. And what else? I can see that here we have this hatches pre-molded. Well, nothing you can do about it. And I wonder where this part will go. Maybe it will be used for the main gun. Next, we continue with the last plastic sprue. This is sprue L. So here we have more of the superstructure panels here and there. And also some of the parts, I guess, these ones will be used for the external armor panels. 
and also various hatches here which is molded separately and if you flip it over here you can see that we also get some interior features but again they will not be useful in this release next we continue with assembly manual so this one is coming as a color printed brochure large format so i will have to zoom out a bit we have short list of the features on the cover and straight away we move on to the marking guide so here we can see first two marking options and these ones are i would say uh, quite a typical german camouflage next we continue with the parts map keep in mind that miniart does not show unused parts that's why you should pay attention to what elements are used here and there next we start assembly with the wall warehouse section so here you install in the torsion bars also you install in this section for the main gun as far as i can understand and we start working on the side and front armor walls next here you can see the glazes plate if we can say so so as you can see we have also separate hedges of course you can open them if you would like to and here we start working on the rear armor wall then we start assembling the superstructure so as you remember we have clear parts for the periscope here you can see how the superstructure will look so yes this part is actually used for the frontal angular area of this superstructure assembly then we get this main gun support section into place and then we enclose it with this uh, mask which was molded as a one piece part here we continue with the hatches so as you can see some p parts will be used it's written for advanced modellers but i guess all modellers will try to use it next we continue with the spare tracks being placed on the rear actually on the front or rear i think it's the rear section because stuck had the additional tracks on the rear section i'm just looking at the spare wheels and they will be placed also on the vehicle here we place the pioneer tools so as i said you have to use the p parts here we assemble the hatches or the special covers for the engine bay next we continue with the machine gun and also assemble the main gun barrel together with the muzzle brake also install the suspension arms here we install some of the suspension elements and another uh, wheel assembly is being conducted then we also combine the drive sprockets together with p parts and this is quite interesting design. I'm just looking how all of this is um, made here. And this is looking interesting. So those are idlers combined with P parts, not the drive sprockets. Those are the drive sprockets. Then we continue with the side skirts. Also we install the additional armor panels, fire extinguisher. And then we start working on the external armor, but it will depend on the marking option you will choose because some of the markings were not using the external armor. That's why you have to pay attention. And this looks quite tricky, to be honest. Here you can see, by the way, the special armor frames and then these brackets which will be holding armor in place. Maybe it would be a good idea to use the welding instead of the um, super glue or AC glue, CA glue if you prefer. Here, by the way, you can see the third marking option. And then we have this vehicle with external armor. Then we have another one without it and one more without external armor. Of course, nobody stops you from installing the external armor on any of the other markings, but I guess you have to have some references in order to prove it or base it on something. So this vehicle should be already available. You can get it in my Daily Mix web shop. Of course, I'll be happy to hear your opinion about this release. Do not forget to write it here in the comment section below. If you like this video, press the like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and I will see in the next video review as usual. Thank you for joining me today and bye.